Who will run the American asylum? Though left leftists have far more mental illness, they stay busy diagnosing and treating conservatives by David Papillion. Folks, I want you to think about it. What one profession has a suicide rate much higher than any other? Psychiatrists. Psychiatrists and psychologists have the highest rate of suicide. And who holds those? They're, these are mostly all liberals. And what are they doing? <laughs> well, people, conservatives, go to these people. Uh, you know, he's talking about the blind leading the blind. Right, folks? Uh, believe me, if you want to learn how to hear, don't go to a deaf person. And it's the same way. So, in this article here, I wanted just to tell you, this is what we're talking about when we're talking about the inversion. This is taking place. It's taking place all through your university. Uh, the young people are being so indoctrinated and so dumbed down, they're, they're totally controlled now by the little black box they hold in their hand. Uh, the ongoing battle between left and right, which, with each side regarding the other as a dangerous to society prompts an important concern that America's future under continued progressive left leadership. We have seen how the Obama Department of Homeland Security singled out conservatives, pro-lifers, constitutionalists, critics of illegal immigration, returning war veterans uh, as people violent, as potentially violent right-wing extremists, and uh, the peaceful Tea Party folks were accused of left-wing media pundits of acting like terrorists, vampires, zombies, and cannibals. Welcome to the history of the far left, where those who, through monumental deceit, have conspired to transform Judeo-Christian America, upend her constitution, and impose an alien new system of government's morality upon her, have the audacity to accuse the traditionally-minded American middle class, which just wants its country back, of being ignorant, deranged, and dangerous. Psychologists call this projection, where one person or a group literally projects its own wrongs into another. Um, and anyhow, to, to make this very short, uh, one of the things, one of the tactics that the, the far left always uses, and it seems to work, is if you don't do exactly what they want, they're offended. You're offending them. This is why it's worked very well for Islam. They go into Britain and they tell the Britain people, if you don't do whatever we want, are offended, you're offending us. Uh, they're doing that here now, uh, here in America. It's happening right now. They're taking over the public education system, the universities, uh, and nobody wants to offend radical Islam. What's well, going to be different, I think, in this country, folks, uh, because again, like I said, that division is becoming greater and greater. Hosea 4 6 is my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. The vast majority of people, I would guess that you folks know, are totally oblivious to what's going on around them. I know I have a lot of a lot of friends of relatives that are totally oblivious. They have uh, they've got no understanding. Listen to this. They'll turn on NBC, ABC, and CBS and they'll believe what they hear. And so this is exactly what God's word, the Bible said would be like. We're exactly where it said. And so here now you're seeing all of these things. And by the way, it's an interesting thing too. Uh, suicide rate, and by the way, uh, here, De Souza, you, you all know, I had him on the radio program. He's an uh, author, uh, philosopher. Uh, he, he has to go uh, for psychological treatment. They're doing the same thing what they want to do now. If you, if you don't adhere to what is called political correctness, uh, you have to agree to go into, you've you got one or two options, go to jail or go into uh, counseling. Here's a, an article here. It's an interesting article. Well, he says, Christians, it's time to face up to your illusions. The vast majority of people are still under the illusion everything is fine, nothing's changed. And uh, there's another article.
example here, I think that's very interesting. It has to do with all of us that work in the pro-life movement on a regular basis. And that is that the suicide rate uh, not only is seven times higher than the average. <coughs> now, we're seeing that the evidence is out there that abortion is a major cause of mental illness. Mm -hmm. A major cause of mental illness. We're breaking these, these women down. Which we've kind of known for a long time, haven't we? Mm -hmm. So, uh, now this is the typical, the typical young uh, college student or, or guy that would bring a woman into the abortion mill. This is what he looks like, you see, right there. That's, that's the mindset of these people out here today. This is what we run into, okay, out there. But anyhow, I want you to go now over to uh, Hebrews chapter 12. In Hebrews chapter 12, I want to read verses 1 through 3. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us. And let us run with patience uh, the race that is set before us. You know, that's an interesting verse. I've had more people ask me what that sin is. <laughs> The previous chapter, the entire chapter, chapter 11, has to do with faith, lack of faith, you know. It's about, it's about the heroes of the faith. Looking into Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. You hear that? The author and the finisher. You know what that means? That means you don't lose your salvation. Amen. God keep, keeps you through it. But boy, I'm going to tell you one thing. You can either, either be a doer of the word... Uh, either give your heart into your faith uh, and place up crowns in heaven, or you'll have all of eternity to wish you to try it harder. And you wish you to put more time in the Lord's work and less in the things of the world. Look into to Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith, who for the joy that was set up before him endured the cross, despising the shame and set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against him, lest you be wearied and faint in your minds, for you have not resisted unto blood, striving against sin. You know what that means? Against blood means to death. That means you resist to death. Amen. That means that you resist any and all forms of tyranny. You resist all of the things that this world has to offer you because all of it's going to bring you in the long run is misery. Right. And then, if you go over to 1 Peter chapter 1, and in 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 13 through 21, we read this. Wherefore, gird up thy loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end of grace that it is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lusts and your ignorance, but as you see, here's, that's what it's all about. You see, this is why it's so important that you study the Word of God. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, not because it's not provided, you hold it in your hand. You hold it in your hand, but you don't read it. You don't study it. As obedience children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lust in your ignorance. But as he which had called you is holy, be you holy in all manner in conversion and conversation. Because it is written, Be you holy, for I am holy. And if you call on the Father, who without respect of persons judges according to every man's work, you hear that? He judges according to every man's work. Amen. See? Again. My job is to come up here and tell you what you need to hear. Your job is to listen, to listen, and to obey. Not me, but the Word of God. 
ordinary man's work past the time of your sojourning here in fear. Do you know what that fear is? Not that, that you fear that God will, will do something evil to you. He's talking about reverence. And what he's talking about is, look, God has expectations of you. You have obligations of him. Your fear is that you don't meet the obligations. Now you can. God gives each and every one of you all of, all of the power. All you have to do is call upon his name and ask him. And he'll see you right through. Every time, God will always, always, always honor. Every commitment that you make to it. Always. Amen. Without fail. For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold. They took that out of the NIV. Mm. Well, no, they kept that in. But here's what they took out for your vain conversation. Received by the tradition from your fathers. And here's what they took out. But with the precious blood of Christ. They took out the blood. Mm. Yes. The lamb without blemish and without spot who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you, who by him do believe in God, that raised him from the dead, and gave him glory, that your faith and hope might be in God. And then, I want you to turn over to Philippians chapter 4. <clears throat> and in Philippians chapter 4. Starting with verse 4 through 9, we read this. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men, the Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, my brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, and if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do. And the God of peace shall be with you. So what he's just telling you is, he's telling you to do exactly the opposite of what society, what the world's telling you to do. It means to just avoid all of that garbage that the world has out there for you. And on these things dwell. Dwell on these things. So you're to dwell on those things and preach against the ugly. Amen? Amen. Well, we've been coming to you from Doers of the Word Baptist Church at 14781 Sperry Road in Newberry, Ohio. Our zip code is 44065. I'm Pastor Sanders, and you've been listening to us on the Liberty Works Radio Network at 104.3 FM, the Eagle in Tampa, Ocala. And until next week, we want to say good morning, God bless, and remember always, always, keep fighting the fight! Yeah.